I'm gonna start with Jesus every day. Moment by moment in work and play. I'm a start in life and starting out right. Starting with Jesus, it is a delight. Starting with Jesus, day and night. Starting with Jesus, I'm starting out right. Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to Starting with Jesus, where we want to encourage you to start every day with Jesus. And do you know one way you can do that? Is by going to our website at startingwithjesus.com slash seedpod. And we have a daily devotional there where we go through the whole story that we're going to be learning today and go through lots of little details that you might not be able to get in a short program that we have today. So make sure to check it out. And we're pretty excited because Miss Michelle is going to be telling our story today, and it's a really, really exciting one. And I can't wait to hear it. Before we get to that, though, let's get to some singing. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead. Till every foe is vanquished, and Christ is Lord indeed. Stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the Christian, you're a sermon in shoes. Do you know, Christian, you're a sermon in shoes? Jesus calls upon you to spread the gospel news. So walk it and talk it and live it and give it a sermon in shoes. Do you know, Christian, you're a sermon in shoes? Do you know, Christian, you're a sermon in shoes? Jesus calls upon you to spread the gospel news. So walk it, and talk it, and live it, and give it, and teach it, and preach it, and know it, and show it, a sermon in shoes. Welcome to another page in God's great book of nature. Some of you have seen these stuck on a tree, on a plant, or even in your garden. Let's take a closer look. What you're looking at is the shell that belonged to a cicada bug. Cicadas don't bite or sting, so there's nothing to be afraid of. They are true bugs with big red eyes and beautiful wings. Do you hear that? Those are cicada bugs. The males have timbal organs on either side of their body that they use to chorus together to make songs for the females. They get very loud, about 90 decibels. That's as loud as a lawnmower. And they have a hollow backside of their body that amplifies the sound even more. And 
their wings help them direct the sound in whatever direction they need it to go. Wow! Only God can design a creation like that, right? Well, once it's warm enough, they emerge from the ground where they've been for a very long time and they crack their backside and begin to wiggle out of their old skin. What's left is an empty shell that just looks like a cicada, but the bug itself is not there anymore. It's just a shell now, an empty shell. That's all that's left. The cicadas then fly or climb up a tree to find a mate, lay their eggs, and die off. Shortly after, the babies tumble to the ground to burrow themselves, and the cycle begins all over again. Ephesians 4, 22 to 24 says, that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. I guess you can think of it this way. That old cicada bug shell is like the old man in us, our former selves, our sinful selves with selfishness and pride, lies, disobedient to parents, mean to others, all that ugly stuff is left behind when we leave that old shell behind. The cicada bug can't stay inside that old shell because it will die. And it certainly shouldn't take that old shell with it, huh? It has to let go and walk away or it won't be able to turn into a new creation and fly in and explore the trees. Well, the same thing for us. Unless you let go of those nasty habits and sinful ways, God can't turn you into a new creation. He wants to give you a new heart, but you have to submit. If you hold on to your old ways, you'll die spiritually. So remember, boys and girls, no matter how much you want to do all that stuff that you used to do, ask God to change your heart and to help you leave all that bad stuff behind. Know that God has a better plan for your life. Until next time, boys and girls, keep looking for treasures in God's great book of nature. Adios! Oh, hey, do you guys ever hum when you're going around the house doing stuff or maybe you're playing or, I don't know, walking somewhere? I oftentimes catch myself humming different songs. Did you recognize the song that I was humming? Hmm. That's another fun game to play, too. Name that tune. Let's pray, and then we'll jump into the story, and I bet you'll figure out what the song was. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending the Holy Spirit. We learned about that in our lesson last week. How amazing. Send him here today to fill our hearts and minds with thoughts of you and help us to understand your word better. Amen. Well, there was a man, and he had never walked before. Can you imagine never being able to walk? Wow. That would be really sad, wouldn't it? And he had a problem with his ankles, so that even since he had been born, he had never been able to walk. That had been over 40 years ago. And he'd heard about Jesus, and he got so excited because he thought, this is the way I can be healed. But he lived a long ways away from where Jesus was. And by the time he was finally able to make it to Jerusalem, he asked around and he heard the really sad news about how Jesus had been crucified. And he thought, oh, it's hopeless. There's no way I can be healed. Jesus is gone. So he went about his life and now he became what we would call a beggar. He would, his friends would take him every day to a gate of the temple called the gate beautiful. And it wasn't beautiful what he had to do there. He would just sit there and hold out his hands and ask for people to give him money for free so that he could have food and such. And people would. In fact, especially at prayer time, a lot of people used the gate beautiful and so he would hold out his hands and some people would give him money to help him to live and survive but it was a sad life right oh what it could have been he thought and i'm sure that he had a lot of days when he thought about how his life would have been different if he could have gotten to jerusalem sooner and yet here he was sitting in the dust asking for money now acts talks about this story and I love a good story with a good ending. And I'm going to warn you right now, this story doesn't stay sad. Acts chapter 3 is where we'll be for our story today. And let's start by reading verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. 
Where did that man sit? You're right, outside the gate where people went in to pray. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, womb is like your the mother's uterus, that's where the babies are, and so ever since he'd been inside of his mother, um, he could not walk. Whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms, that's like another word for money or handouts, from those who entered the temple. And he sat there. But this day would be different. He didn't know that yet, though. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked them for some alms. Logical. He saw two guys walking into the temple, and he asked them for some money. And fixing his eyes on them, on him, with John, Peter said, look at us. You can imagine asking for money is not a fun thing to do. And oftentimes people might even feel bad that they have to ask for money, and so they may be looking down. Because a lot of times when people are feeling sad or upset, they look down. They said, look up at us. So the guy did. He's like, that's curious. No one ever really cares to talk to me or look at me. And verse 5 says, So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Of course, look at us. We're going to give you something. That makes the most logical sense, right? And so he gave them his attention. Then Peter said to him, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. Okay, I kind of wanted money, thought the man, but maybe he has some leftovers in his, you know, cloak pocket or something. And then the next words came, which changed the man's life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ of Nazareth? That's right. Now he was really listening and hope like sprang into his eyes, right? Rise up and walk. Oh, how he had longed to do that for his whole life. Rise up and walk? Yes, please. And what did the man do? Verse 7 said, And he took him by the right hand, one of the disciples, and lifted him up, and immediately the man's feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And those people knew. They recognized him. They'd seen him sitting there day after day after day. They knew that this man was the crippled man who was healed by God's power through his servants, Peter and John. The people were watching. And they were now more curious to learn more about Jesus. Verse 11 says, Now as the lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's, Solomon's porch, greatly amazed. And at this time, Peter saw that the people were getting really excited about him and John. They were, they were getting really amped up, really excited about this miracle that these two men had, had performed. And that's when Jesus, what, that's when Peter redirected the praise to Jesus. And that's what we should do too. When people see us do good things for God, which he has empowered us to do, we should redirect that to Jesus. And I, over the years, have had trouble knowing how to say that, right? Because people come up to you maybe after church, you did a special music, or you said prayer, or you read the scripture. Maybe you did something with your Pathfinder group, or I don't know what you've done, but maybe you did a kind deed. And they're like, oh, thank you so much. Oh, you're so amazing. What can you say? Because you're kind of like, I mean, part of you wants to say, yeah, I'm kind of amazing, right? But we know that it's God who makes us that way, right? So I found a really simple thing that you can do. And I just say, praise God. Two simple words. That's all that you have to say. They say, oh, Miss Michelle, we like that you tell us stories. And I love telling you guys stories. But I'll say, oh, I really enjoy it too. Praise God. What a great opportunity he's given me to do that. Praise God. Two words that just shoots the attention right back up to God who deserves all the attention and then some, right? So Peter pretty much said, praise God. Like he filled us with his spirit to make this happen. This is because of Jesus, not because of us. He is the Messiah. And then Peter, of course, he saw this as a sermon opportunity. He saw this as an opportunity to witness and tell his story. And he said, Jesus is the Messiah. And he came here and yet, the people here, kind of saying you guys, chose to free Barabbas and crucify the Savior. Oh, how sad, right? 
And he even called the rulers out in this. He said, yet now, brethren, I know that you did it in ignorance, as did also your rulers. Whoa, he used the word ignorance and rulers in the same sentence. You know he's going to hear from them, right? But it was true. They didn't understand what they were doing. And the rulers kind of did understand what they were doing, and they did it anyways, which is really scary, right? In verse 19 through 21, he gives a powerful appeal or a call to people. And this is what he says. Repent, therefore, and be converted, be changed, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth and all his holy prophets since the world began. Wow. Repent and be converted. How exciting, right? And let me double check where I am here. Here it is. God still loves you. It was Peter's message to the people. Even though that you messed up and you crucified him, he still loves you. In Acts 3 verses 25 through 26, it says, You are sons of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with your father, our fathers, saying to Abraham, And your seed, through your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. To you first, God having raised up his servant Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away from every one of you from your iniquities. He'll help you stop sinning, right? He'll bless you. Now, as in any good story, there's often a tattletale. Don't tell me who the tattletale is in your life. I don't want to know. But there was a tattletale in this story as well. And they went to tell the priests, guess what? This guy is saying, he's saying that Jesus is alive and he's saying that he's the son of God and he's saying, and the priests were like, whoa, 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 that's not, that's not the true story because remember that fake story that they had made up about how the disciples had stolen the body and Jesus wasn't really alive? Well, it didn't match what the disciples' testimony was, right? So people were starting to see through the charade. They were starting to see the rulers had lied and the priests got upset about this, of course because it was making them look bad. And so in Acts 4, verses 1 through 3, it says, Now as they spoke to the people, Peter and John, the priests, the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in custody. They put them in jail, or they took them into custody until the next day. For it was already evening. However, many of those who heard the word believed, and the number of the men who came to, to be about 5,000. 5,000 people believed that day, the day of Pentecost. Wow. Now, the next day found them in the same courtroom as Jesus had been in. And the same courtroom where soon after Peter had denied Jesus, right? This time Peter did not want to deny his Lord and Savior. And in Acts 4, verse 8, it says... Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, If we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means has he, was made, he has been made well, by what means he has been made well, let us, it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. He's living proof. He's right here. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no name under heaven given among men by which you must be saved. No, for there is no other name except Jesus. Wow, what a powerful testimony that Peter had. He wasn't ashamed anymore. He was, didn't want to be quiet anymore. He knew that he had the truth, and he was following the true Messiah. Now, this was definitely a new improved Peter, wasn't it? And in verse 13, it says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that, that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled, this is the priests, and they realized that they had been with Jesus. Do people realize that you've spent time with Jesus? Hmm, that's a good question. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could, not say, they could say nothing against it. He was living proof. He was standing right there with them. Verse 15 says, but, they had, but when they had commanded them to go, 
aside out of the council, they conferred amongst themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For indeed, that a, um, a notable miracle has been done through them is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem. We cannot deny it. But so that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them that from now on they will speak to no man about this name, Jesus. So they called them and commanded them not to speak or teach um, about the name of Jesus. But Peter and John had an answer for them. And they said, um, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than, back up, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge, for we cannot speak the things which you have, which we have seen and heard. We cannot but speak. They're like, we're going to speak it no matter what. Um, so when they departed, they further threatened them. They let them go, finding no way of punishing them because of the people, since they had glorified God for what had been done. Wow. They were going to tell people about Jesus no matter what. Let's do that too. Thank you so much, Miss Michelle, for that Bible story. And it's time to look at last week's questions and see what they were. So let's go back and look at those and see if you got them right. Shout out to Christian, Daniel, Clarice, Julia, Arthur, Skylar, Kevin, Savannah, Elijah, Amy, Audrey, Ray, Ariel, Hannah, Robin, Hadassah, Markyan, Isaiah, Lizzie, Ethan, Alex, Sanginamichu, Wingari, Garuma, Benny, Ellie, Denny, Dom, Isaiah, Mayjay, Kaishin, Mia, Analia, and Benji. Great job answering your questions. It's time for our new questions, so go and grab a piece of paper or a computer or something to write down the new questions so that you can send them in to us at answers at startingwithjesus.com. Are you ready? Okay, question number one. What two disciples healed the crippled man? What two disciples healed the crippled man? Question number two. How long had the crippled man been unable to walk? How long had the man been a cripple and unable to walk? And question number three, who was upset about this miracle? Who was upset about this miracle? Make sure to send your answers to us at answers at startingwithjesus.com. We love to see your answers, so send them to us at answers at startingwithjesus.com. The prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. The prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. The prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. The prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. Prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. James 5.15 The prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. James 5.15 The prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. The prayer of faith will save, save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. When Jesus walked on earth, he performed a lot of miracles. He told the blind to open their eyes and they could see. He told Lazarus to come out of the grave and Lazarus was alive again. Jesus even worked through his disciples. When his disciples said, in Jesus' name, pick up your bed and walk, the lame stood up, rolled up their bed, and walked. 
Jesus performed a lot of miracles, and the people were healed because they listened and obeyed. We're going to play a listening and obeying game today. Are you ready to play? Yes. Good. Let's play Miss Amanda Says. Miss Amanda Says, put your hands on your head. <laughs> Miss Amanda Says, put your hands on your nose. <laughs> Miss Amanda Says, turn around. <laughs> Good job. Miss Amanda says, jump up and down three times. <laughs> nice. Are you playing with us? Miss Amanda says, put both hands behind your ears. Miss Amanda says, pat your head. Miss Amanda says, touch your toes. Miss Amanda says, touch your knees. Miss Amanda says, cross your arms to say love. Miss Amanda says, stretch this way, stretch the other way. Miss Amanda says, take one step forward. Miss Amanda says, take one step back. Miss Amanda says, wink one eye. Miss Amanda says, wiggle your fingers. <laughs> Miss Amanda says, pat yourself on the tummy. <laughs> How well are you doing obeying and following the directions? This is a fun game to play. You could play at home with your friends and family. But remember, the person we always want to listen and obey is Jesus. When Jesus tells us to do something and we listen and obey, we are always happier because of it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so glad you were here today. And if you are going to be at ASI in Orlando, Florida, come and check out our booth. We're going to be there and we're really excited. We're going to be next to the Audioverse booth and the My Bible First booth. So if you are near the My Bible First booth or the Audioverse booth, you'll know that we are right there. And come say hi, we would love to see you. Miss Katie's gonna be there, I'm going to be there, and there's gonna be a lot of different ways that you can participate in our programs, in the daily devotional program with Miss Katie, and in our weekly Sabbath school program, and also there's gonna be some fun activities that we will have there. So make sure to come say hi and we would love to meet you we love to see who's watching our sabbath school programs and we would love to see you there so come say hi let's pray dear father in heaven thank you so much for today thank you so much that you love us and thank you for the stories in the bible that help remind us of your care for each one of us thank you for sending your holy spirit on the disciples and allowing them to be able to have strength to be able to stand for you and to be able to help others in your power. I pray that you will give us your Holy Spirit so that we can share that love with others and we can stand firm for you and also help others in so many different ways. I pray that each one of these children will choose today to follow you and to stand firm for Jesus and to be missionaries no matter where they are. We love you, Jesus, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for watching. Have a blessed week and keep in touch.